Hey everyone, it is Ujul. It is so great to see you. Today, we're going to talk about a killer strategy that you can use to help you ace the chemical and physical sciences section of the MCAT. Let's get started. Hey everyone, it is Ujul. It is so great to see you. I hope everyone is doing well in these uncertain times. I know that especially with the MCAT test dates getting canceled, a lot of students are right now worried, panicked, and the first thing I'd like to tell you guys is to definitely not. A lot of students are in the same boat, so you are not alone, and medical schools will understand that when it's time for the application cycle to begin. So anyone who is planning on taking the MCAT anytime in the coming months, plan to do so at the earliest date available don't try to change your plans because of what's been going on because as i said everyone is in the same boat you are not alone if anyone would like me to make a, another video talking more about how you should be changing your mcat study plan based on the present circumstances let me know in the comments down below and i will definitely do that but let's jump right to it today we're going to talk about how you can ace the chemical and physical sciences section of the mcat this has been uh, one of the most requested videos so far, so that's why I planned this one next in the series. As usual, this video will be divided into three sections. First, we're gonna talk about what you should be doing to prepare for each of the different topics tested in this section. Second, we'll actually jump into the strategy and approach that I recommend, one that I used helped me do pretty well in this section and something that can definitely put you guys ahead of the game. The last section is just gonna be a couple of key takeaways, summary points that I really want you to keep in mind as you're planning your preparation and practice for this section. All right, so without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, everyone. So the first thing that we need to keep in mind for this section is chemistry, chemistry, chemistry. The MCAT is a chemistry heavy exam, as you may have already understood. There's biochem, gen chem, organic chemistry. So you definitely need to know your chemistry but you don't need to know everything in as much depth as you may think you do need to know. Something that I covered in one of my previous episodes in the MCAT series is that there is only so much that you need to know, and it's really important to get that clear right off the bat so you're not spending time or wasting time learning things in depth that you really don't need to know that really won't be helping you for the exam. So the first thing is you have biochem. So yes, biochemistry is also required knowledge for this section. But the good news is your biochem preparation that you've already been doing for the bio biochem section will be the same and it'll apply here as well. So that means there's nothing really new that you need to be reviewing in terms of biochem here. So what are specific biochem topics that may be really relevant? Well, the most common one, something you may already be familiar with is amino acids. Knowing those amino acids, the shorthands, the structures is really critical, especially in the chemical and physical sciences section, because you may get questions asking about the specific chemical properties of specific amino acids. So knowing which categories amino acids fall under, such as polar versus nonpolar, positively charged versus negatively charged, can really help you guys out here. So that's just one example of a high yield topic. Another really common one would be enzymes, as it can be very applicable when you're doing calculations in terms of physics and stuff like that. So the key takeaway here is that you're already reviewing from biochem. You don't need to really do anything new. Just make sure that you're focusing on those key high yield points in your biochem review, and that should be more than enough. All right, so the next chemistry topic that's gonna to be covered is going to be gen chem. If I had to pick and choose two subjects which are gonna be the most bang for your buck on this section, that's gen chem and then physics. General chemistry is gonna give you the backbone of all of the things you need to know for this section. You can definitely expect to see it on most of the passages, if not all. And then the next is gonna be general physics. What I personally recommend for your preparation for general chemistry, go through a review book if you are a little rusty on the fundamentals. It's definitely going to serve you well later on. But when it comes time to preparation, the strategy that I like to defer to is active recall something you guys may already be familiar with. And if not, if you watch more videos on this channel, you will quickly learn that I am a huge proponent of active recall. Active recall is essentially pulling information out of your brain, creating new connections as you're learning something in order to further solidify concepts. So when you're going through your general chemistry review, I recommend doing one pass through review books and a second review should be done using flashcards. 
Anki is a popular spaced repetition active recall software that can help you do that. That's what I do actually recommend that a lot of students use. And the Anki deck, there's a lot of pre-made decks already made out there, which I will link in the description below. But the Anki deck that I recommend a lot of students use is Mile Down. It's probably one of the most popular right now. You can definitely come across it through a simple Google search and it'll show up on Reddit. But it goes through all the concepts that you need to know for all of the subjects covered on the MCAT. So I definitely recommend using that as a critical resource. All right, so that's general chemistry. What do you do for general physics? Same thing. If you're rusty on the concepts, I recommend going through one pass of the review book. Personally, I did not do so because I had just then taken general physics and so I was pretty well versed with the concepts. And another thing is for physics, a lot of it just boils down to using formulas. The concepts are tied into the formula. So if you know the formulas for electricity and magnetism and the other topics covered, you're able to explain what they do, how they work. You're internally reviewing the concepts that go hand in hand and all in all, you're doing your physics review right there. So basically what I did was I created my own personal review sheets with all the physics formulas listed out and I would go ahead and reproduce these formulas on an empty piece of paper from memory. I kept doing this to make sure that I was one, using active recall and two, using spaced repetition to make sure that I did not forget any of this information. All right, so we talked about biochemistry, general chemistry and physics. And the last topic left for this section is our famous organic chemistry the dreaded undergrad pre-med weed out class that we've all had to take. Organic chemistry is actually not that heavily tested on the MCAT. So contrary to what you may be already doing or what you may believe to be true, I personally recommend students don't go through a review book for organic chemistry. Now, I did when I was reviewing and I quickly realized later on that going through a review book was actually a very low yield task. A lot of the important concepts that you need to know for Orgo are going to be one, already known because they're so basic. So a quick review from a Khan Academy video will be more than enough to brush up on those skills. And two, some of those concepts actually overlap with general chemistry. So you'll already be reviewing them and you'll simply be wasting your time by going through the review book. So my personal recommendation for Orgo is when you're going through your primary content review at the beginning of your MCAT prep, Go through all the other subjects and skip Orgo. Don't worry about it. The extent of Orgo to which you should be familiar with will be covered in the practice exams. So if you ever do miss an Orgo question, simply referring to a Khan Academy video, reviewing that simple concept is more than enough to brush up on your Orgo skills. There is no need to directly go through a Orgo review book, especially considering how low yield this subject really is. All right, so we went ahead and talked about all the different subjects that you should know, how you should be preparing for them using active recall and spaced repetition. I'll go ahead and link a couple of resources down below for your reference if you wanna learn a little bit more about these topics. But now let's jump into the actual strategy that we should be using in the chemical and physical sciences section. Let's go. All right, guys. So the strategy that we're gonna be using to tackle the chemical and physical sciences section will actually be really similar to the one that we used in the bio biochem section. So if you haven't checked that out already, I highly recommend you do so. But let's jump into the actual strategy. First key principle, we need to separate the relevant information from the irrelevant information. One thing you may notice really early on in your practice is that the passages in this section are a little bit more compact and less dense than those in our bio and biochem section. That's a good thing. It makes our lives a little easier, but the fact is there is still going to be information in there that you don't need to focus on. And it is your job through repeated practice exams to quickly pick up on the information that is more likely to be important as opposed to that of which is not. So the first part of our strategy is the use of a diagram. Now, for the biochem section, I recommended using one mini diagram per paragraph because there was that much information in those passages. But for this section, we will not be doing so. The passages are quite succinct and to the point, and therefore one general picture is more than enough to help us capture the events going on in the passage. Now, the reason why I recommend using a diagrammatic or pictorial representation to go ahead and capture the information in the passage is because our brains like to process images a lot better than processing textual information. When you're going through the questions, you don't want to be referring back to the passage, going through the text, getting the numbers you need, figuring out the trends going on. You want to do all that heavy groundwork while you're going through the passage 
And then when you're answering questions, it's just referring to the diagram, getting your answer, choosing it, moving on. That helps streamline the whole process, effectively letting us save a lot more time and getting more questions right. And that's what we want to do on this exam. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create that diagram. And as we do so, we want to make sure that if there is a concept that is covered in the passage as we are reading, we don't want to focus too much about what that concept exactly is. We just want to get that information down into our pictorial representation. The reason is we want to separate relevant information from irrelevant information. There's a good chance that topic may not be exactly asked in the questions following. And if that's the case, we don't want to waste our time thinking about, do I recall what this concept is? Because that is just going to be an absolute waste of our time. So we're going to go through this process and simply focus on creating a nice pictorial representation of the information from the passage and then jump to our questions. Now, the next very important point in this section is usually each question will be focusing on one concept. Use this to your advantage. A lot of students tend to think that questions are asking about a mirage of concepts. They're asking from things from chemistry and physics, and we need to figure out how to synthesize that together to get the right answer. But the fact is, that's not the case. Each question is usually only referring to one concept. So your job is to pick up on these patterns, and that's gonna come with practice. The more you practice, the better you're gonna get at being able to notice patterns which types of questions are referring to which types of concepts. And that takes us to our second point. When you're trying to figure out what concepts these questions are referring to, you can always take a look at the answer choices to get a clue. The answer choices can be presented in a format that can help indicate this is a chemistry question or wait, this is a physics question. Now, that can be a very big game changer in how you think and approach the question and ultimately letting you get that question right. So that is it for the strategy. In summary, we create our little diagram, we go through the questions, figure out what is the one concept that this question is asking us about, jump to the answer choices to get a clue as to what that concept could be, and use that information and our review of the content and apply it to this question to answer it and then move on. And that is it. All right, so now let's jump to the key takeaways and end this video. All right, guys. So the first key takeaway that I want to share with you today, if I had to pick two sections for which practice makes the largest difference on this exam, that would have to be the chemical and physical sciences section and then cars. Now, that doesn't mean the other sections don't need practice, but the other sections really need a strong backbone in the content areas. Of course, coupled with a strong strategy that will help you get through the section as well, and that does require practice. But in terms of rote getting better, these two sections require practice the most. Cars, for obvious reasons, and I made another video on how that really does make a difference. But for the chemical and physical sciences section, as you'll notice early on, the number of concepts that you need to know isn't that many. So really what it comes down to is an application of these concepts. Just like for physics, knowing the formula is not enough, we need to know how to apply it to a specific scenario. And on the MCAT, each passage is exactly that. It's a unique scenario for which the same formula may apply, but in a different way. And it's your job to pick up on that. Practice helps you see the patterns because the AMC test makers always follow patterns. The sooner you get to practice exams and go through a lot of practice problems and passages, you will really quickly realize the patterns are very obvious. They will help direct you to exactly what concepts the questions are asking about, and that's gonna help orient your thinking. The second key takeaway, in addition to practice, you need to remember one part of the strategy we talked about. One question, one concept. I'm reiterating this point once again, because a lot of students do make the mistake on the exam of thinking a question may be asking about different concepts together, and that really overcomplicates the situation. Remember, the exam isn't as difficult as the test makers make it out to be. It's a lot more simple if we give ourselves the opportunity to break the questions down. All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I definitely hope that that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, please leave a comment down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe and stay safe in these uncertain times. All right, I will see you guys in that next one. Take care.